everybody and welcome back to the Wellness Lounge podcast series uh, to help you to navigate through this difficult time. So today we have a very special guest, Noelle Crenn, a nutritional therapist, sorry that's a mouthful, um, of Nourish with Noelle who is joining us today. You're very welcome Noelle, thanks for joining us, thanks for your time. Thank you for having me Gillian, how are you? I'm good, good. How are you? How have you been the last few weeks? I'm good. Um, yeah, it's a different time, isn't it? Uh, it is. But I think everyone is just trying to get through it day by day. Um, yes. I think that's all we're kind of being allowed to do anyway because we just don't really know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm coping. I'm coping well. Okay. I'm, like, I'm keeping up a routine. Um, okay. Still have a you know, work to do. Yeah. And then outside of that as well, I'm just building on hobbies or building on work which I have, haven't done before which would be online work okay um, yeah I think just having something to kind of focus on um some of the day you know yeah. is is important to kind of get through all of this yeah um, yeah yeah I think we're all just trying our own way really with it all yeah I've been talking to a few people this week and you're basically echoing what everyone's saying the importance of having a routine using the time to do things that maybe you haven't had the time and then I suppose adapting to change by moving online as well so this forum is new to us all and I don't know about you but I've had loads of technical issues this week Um, and I'm putting out interviews with mistakes and all those different things and I'm moving out of my comfort zone but you know there's great learning and and there's growth um, in that. So I really wanted to invite you on today, um, Noelle, because um, as a nutritional therapist, I think um, you can add a lot of value to this page. I'm watching people on social media um, cooking a lot, which is great, um, um, having the time to do it, but I'm also watching people who are complaining that they're eating too much or that they were buying a lot of processed food because there was this fear and panic buying um, as well. So what is nutritional therapy first? Can you explain to us what you do and how you support people? Yeah, so with nutritional therapy, we look at uh, the therapeutic, I suppose, effect that whole food has on health and well-being. So how nutrition um, supports us. Mm -hmm. And it's it's very much looking at the person. So it's very much person-centered rather than if someone comes in to me and I see a symptom um, or a specific organ, let's say, that's under stress, just focusing on that, we take the whole person into consideration. So it's very much about personalised nutrition. Okay. So it would be case history based. Um, we would look at the person's case history. We would take into account every system of the body. Um, we'd look at their work-life balance and we would look at their food intake. And then from that, we would be able to put together... Um, a plan for the person Mm -hmm. so it's kind of see is there any underlying nutritional deficiencies that are going on that are maybe exacerbating the symptoms in the first place Mm -hmm. um and i suppose the main area i would work in would be stress management so it would be more brain health um mental health areas like that and showing people the i suppose the positive impact that nutrition has on supporting your health and your well-being um, mind and body so okay. it's one interconnected and one impacts the other yeah because I actually have learned a lot from you by following you um, on social media and we'll put your Instagram handle at the end of the interview because the information you put out around brain function and brain health really got me thinking because I have to say I'm probably one of the many people that when I'm choosing my food I'm not thinking of I may be thinking of health but I might be thinking of what's a good fat or what's not a good fat but I'm actually not making that connection to my mental health and um, more my physical health um, our brain function doesn't come into it at all so you're talking that choosing the right foods for you can actually help relieve stress is that correct yeah um and like everyone does that. i don't think people correlate the food and the mind really it's it's always been a physical aspect of life i suppose because it's um it can be brought into like the diet world or the weight world and it can kind of maybe just used as a a physical representation of oneself rather than your mental self um 
And sometimes we kind of zone too much in how food affects how we look rather than how we feel. Yeah. Which is really, really important. Yeah. Um, and with food, it basically is a case that it's, it's your information. So food is made up of your vitamins and your minerals and your amino acids. And these are literally your building blocks for your hormones in your body and for the neurotransmitters in the brain. Um, and these are like just little messengers that are going around the mind and the body and they all, they all interconnect because they all have a, a relationship with each other. And it depends on what we're eating. Are we building healthy hormones and healthy neurotransmitters um, or are we not? And that's really where food comes into play when it comes to supporting the brain. Um, and then when you're supporting the brain, you're supporting your response to okay. whatever is going on, you know, whether it's stress, um, whether it's your, it's your mental health. So it just helps you to, I suppose, be able to deal and handle and manage whatever you're going through a little bit better because you're being given the raw materials that build your body and build your brain in the first place. Okay, so it's kind of like, if, like and this is probably a really... Um, uh, wrong way to put it but you're thinking about people put clean fuel into their car and their car operates you know better so it's about how you're fueling so that your body can kind of and your brain so your mental health all pillars of your well-being can function at an optimal level um, yeah. so I guess when somebody comes to your clinic you are looking at the whole person and you're kind of developing a case history um, mm -hmm. and then you tweak your advice or support around that but what about to the group out here that you don't have a case history um, are there certain foods um, that we should be avoiding right now for stress and anxiety are there certain foods that maybe we should be thinking of introducing into our diet are there certain things that we could look at balancing a little bit yeah I think introducing more would then kind of lead you to eating the foods that probably wouldn't support you the best okay. anyways. Okay. Um, and I would just become more aware of say what you would have in the morning because that really can set off your day physiologically and psychologically. So if you eat something, let's say that's processed in the morning, mm -hmm. um, this can really throw off your blood sugars. Um, and when you throw these off, these can kind of lead to spikes in your stress hormones and then dips in your hormones. Yeah. And this can really impact your clarity, um, your peace of mind, how you focus, how you can concentrate, feeling calm. So mm -hmm. say in the morning, if you were just to have a bowl of cereal, mm -hmm. um, your blood sugars would spike. And after okay. about 20 minutes, they would drop again. And then you'd feel hungry. You might go for some carbohydrate again on its own and then you cook it into a vicious cycle okay. whereas if you in the morning had maybe eggs on toast or if you were having the cereal had some nuts and seeds in with that as well that's more complex it's more balanced it would support your blood sugars a bit more um, and then you would be you would be feeling more balanced yourself and you okay. can keep yourself going for maybe for three to four hours have something again like a balanced meal and keep you more stabilized so blood sugar balancing would be a big thing. Okay. And what can throw that off then is just having too much processed food, having too much sugar, um, and even just not eating in the first couple of hours of your morning can throw that off as well. So I would be aware of your processed food intake because okay. um, that can cause deficiencies in the body if you're not eating more whole food. Um, and that can affect your brain function. Um, if you're having too much stimulants like coffee or alcohol, that also can throw off your ability to absorb certain nutrients. Um, so just be careful of those as well. Okay. And then more whole foods, so like your fiber and your protein foods and your root vegetables. Um, these are really, really important. They're full of the information that we need to support a healthy brain. Okay. Okay. So um, I guess it's a, it's about the obvious ones that people have put out there. Like, I mean, yeah, eggs and toast, lovely um, porridge and adding a little bit of um, protein into that. These things that are kind of the slow release. So I guess this isn't new to us, but now is the time to develop good routines to kind of say, okay, we all know at this stage that the cereals can be very high sugar content. But now it's about saying to people, well, physiologically, what's happening is we get a hit from that sugar and then we, we kind of drop. So there's actual a stress reaction, a cortisol reaction in, in the body. And right now, 
that's probably happening to a lot of people anyway. So um, choosing the right food can kind of help um, maybe manage that or support more stress relief. Am I getting it right? Is it kind of exactly. that? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. It's, um, I think you can say food, food are healthy, but if yeah. you're in a time of stress, mm-hmm. that's not the first thought that comes into your head. You okay. know, that I want to eat something healthy. Yeah. But if you thought, God, if I ate this, and it would help me cope, you know, it might reduce the stress I'm feeling. Um, I would feel better. My mood would be better. Mm. And maybe that's an incentive to eat these foods. And that's where my role comes in for what I do in my job is to educate people on how this would help them. Um, I know for me, when I used to suffer really bad with anxiety, there was none of this information out there and it wasn't until i was studying it myself that i could really associate if i had sugar in the evening i would wake with anxiety in the morning and when i cut that out i would be a lot better or if i went to the cinema and i had to pick a mix the next morning i would have it and it wasn't until i started to experiment it myself Mm. and i could really it was the only difference in my day that i did and it really impacted my my mental health wow so I think it's when you become aware of how something yeah. is making you feel, um, especially at this time when we really need to be minding our, ourselves. You know, we are having to cope um, and put and be a bit more resilient. So I think it's trying to connect the dots, you know, for mm-hmm. people that they understand that these foods support you um, and they mind you and they mind your body and they mind your mind. It doesn't mean that you don't have the foods that you love. Yes, it's, yeah. So these building blocks are there as a foundation to support you and then whatever you have on top of that is is fine you know so i mean again i suppose that is proof further proof of our food affects our mood and 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 again you know we read all these things but until we actually self-reflect and i was saying to you there before the call um for medical reasons i had to go off um dairy for a little bit during the summer and um because of the work that i do i am quite self-reflective anyway um so i had no dairy um for eight weeks um and what i noticed was i had a more lighter kind of more positive mindset about me so that's not to say that if you went off dairy that it would have that impact but it is kind of individual so it is about kind of tuning in to say like what you did okay, what did I have last night? Okay, the pick and mix, that's lots of sugar. That's why my head is a bit out of sorts this morning or I'm feeling the anxiety. Um, so again, people have the, the time to maybe really look at is their food supporting their current mood? And the current mood out there is there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of emotions, there's a lot of busy households, there's a lot of people in the households, there's a lot of that fight or flight. Um, so look at your processed food intake look at your sugar content. What about fruit? Because people say, is fruit okay, sugar, or, or not? Or is there kind of a mixed kind of uh, feeling around that? Because I, my breakfast in the morning is a bowl of berries with some coconut yogurt. Um, is that something that's good? Or should I be looking at something a little bit like, like the eggs and toast? No, fruit is, fruit is great. Mm. Um, I just wouldn't have it on its own because of the impact it has on your blood sugars. So your body okay. would look at it the same as sugar is sugar. Um, so I would have that with maybe Greek yogurt um, mm. or nuts or seeds. So yeah. just combine it with something like that. Um, or if you chop up an apple or chop up a piece of fruit and put some nut butter on that. Lovely, that yeah. would really, really help. So it's just not having it on its own. There's nothing wrong with fruit or carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. It's just that they have to be combined with a bit of protein and healthy fats. So they're, you're, they're not going to spike your blood sugar, basically. Okay, so it's to, to manage that. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, now I actually, I get that concept. So it's kind of tried to limit that spike because when you go, what goes up must kind of go down again. Yeah. Okay, and that's yeah. kind of what's happening. Um, I saw a lot of people this morning, not this morning, um, in the last week also joking about the fact that they need to social distance from the fridge um, because they're spending all this time at home. People also have a lot of food because they're going and they're doing big shops. So there's a lot of temptation um, in, in, in the house. Um, how or what advice or support would you give to people eating out of boredom or eating out of you know, emotions or again, low mood or, you know, how would you um, 
what would you tell people around managing cravings? Cravings is, um, first of all, is to see if it's an actual physiological deficiency that's going on. Like, are you deficient in maybe certain minerals like magnesium or zinc um, or your B vitamins, first of all, and they can lead you to having cravings. Mm. So sometimes it's not an emotional uh, response. It's more of a physical one that you're deficient in certain nutrients that you are getting the cravings in the first place, or if you're under eating, um, okay. or if you're cutting out certain food groups, all of these things can lead you to, to having cravings. So first of all, I'd see if there's more of a physical component mm -hmm. uh, to it. Outside that then there is, um, there's different reasons we eat, like we can eat out of impulse, you know, if you're in a very stressed state, you can really just want to eat something to kind of push down the, the feeling. Mm. Um, and then there's emotion, as you say, we can eat out of emotion. It can be a, a crutch for, for many people. Um, and then I think we forget that we have a choice in, mm -hmm. in all of that. Mm -hmm. And I think if it's a comfort thing, mm -hmm. um, is it really a comfort thing? Because some people say they eat for comfort, but then they don't actually enjoy the experience mm -hmm. um, and they feel bad afterwards. Mm -hmm. so that I would just become more aware of do I actually see this as a comfort? Do I mm. sit down and enjoy what I'm having mm -hmm. and then feel fine after it? Mm -hmm. Or do I feel really bad for having it and feel worse? Mm. After it? And that's when maybe it's, it's unhealthy and it's something you're doing that's not of your best benefit. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you have, it's becoming aware of yourself first of, of why am I doing this? Because mm -hmm. I really love it. Yeah. But because I'm really stressed and I'm just trying to get rid of the feeling. Yeah. And the boredom, I would, it's just saying, God, I'm only eating out of boredom. Sometimes mm. talking to yourself. Yeah. Being your own parent and be like, I'm doing this out of boredom. I'm going to leave the kitchen and do something else and distract myself or have a glass of water or make a cup of tea you know mm -hmm. um, it's just literally in giving yourself those 10 seconds to check in and see okay why why am I doing this you know yeah yeah um, and it's not judging yourself or it's not still doing it mm. because it takes a while like it takes a while to change a pattern mm. and to change a pattern within a stress stressed time is a big big challenge for people that sure. I ask them to do it would be just to make the little changes, the little mm -hmm. changes, um, making sure that you're having some fiber in one of your meals, you're having a balanced meal, you're eating three times a day, you're drinking some water. Mm -hmm. And if you still have other foods on top of that, like sugar, fine. But mm -hmm. you're supporting yourself in some way and you will feel the benefits of that. And usually when you feel the benefits of that, you do more of that stuff. Um, yeah. Kind of just lessen of their own so they don't have the strength in them like they used to before mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think you know i can really identify what you're saying there because um as somebody who's always turned to food for emotion so um unfortunately i haven't been the person that's gone for a 10k run to get the stress out of me i know some people use exercise to get stress i turn to, to food um and not so much at uh, um at this current time but you're so right logically if you can separate the reaction um and actually have like look at it kind of from impartially it's like yes you're eating it you're feeling guilty eating it you're telling yourself it's wrong you're telling yourself you're a failure um and often waking up the next day going oh god and carrying that guilt which is actually then you're behaving out of that mood now which is kind of like you're in this you know loop all the time um so it's really, really good advice. What you're saying there is to kind of have that conversation with yourself, which takes mm -hmm. discipline. Um, and we don't always kind of do that. And sometimes there is that kind of little, um, I suppose, like a, a, like a tantrum inside of us. No, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it because yeah. it is it is a behavior um, and behaviors do take time to change. But mm -hmm. again, isn't this what we have at the moment we've time to observe we've time to kind of develop that kind of awareness with ourselves and make better informed decisions and absolutely you know we won't get it right all the time um but like what you said there little bits three meals a day fiber a little bit of water because i do think there is a lot of information out there and people try to 
compare themselves to people who've been doing this for a long, long time. You know, there's a lot of influencers out there that have it really, really good. So we have to kind of be easy on ourselves and start to nourish ourselves a little bit more every day. Would you, would you agree? Rather than aiming for perfection. Yeah. Absolutely. It takes time. Like it takes time. Like I, I, it took a lot of my time to get where I am today. Um, and it's just the little things and it's, it doesn't go like it doesn't go accordingly to plan like you know you'll do it and then you won't do it and then you'll try it and then you won't try it yeah. um it's more when you do it out of because you want to take care of yourself yes. you know it's from that place of i really need nourishment i really right, right now i need to feel okay i want to feel okay yeah. so what can i do to feel okay yeah. um it's just a it's such a shame when the guilt and the harsh voice in our heads yeah. can be just so mean. Yeah, I know, <laughs> um, yeah. Give out to us for what our choices are doing. And I think that's yeah. where the choice comes into play. Um, no matter what you're telling yourself, you do have a choice to, in that moment, you know, and sometimes mm. you make a choice that you want to make and then sometimes you won't. Exactly. Uh, and that's okay. Yeah, that's yeah. Because you're still aware. Yeah, yeah. I find with a lot of the clients I work with in my coaching practice, even though we don't directly talk about food or nutrition, we do talk about thoughts and we do talk about what's that kind of dialogue that you're having with yourself and would you talk to your friend, your partner or your sister in the same way that you would talk to yourself and the penny drops for a lot of people because they think no I'd be so much more compassionate with somebody else and I'd say go easy on yourself so once we can actually say okay go easy on yourself so you know we're making this kind of commitment to improve our physical our mental emotional our spiritual well-being and so what can one thing can we do and then build momentum on that and I think that reflection every day is it's not about you know oh I ate this I ate that but what did I do oh I drank more water um okay tomorrow I might add this in oh I'm going to actually introduce the nuts into my breakfast and and slowly doing it but always being aware of how you're creating that momentum towards your goal as opposed to reaching the goal which you know maybe we're not ready for I know I have many goals that I'd love to get to but I'm not ready and I keep falling off the horse but the important thing is reflection and getting back on the horse and being compassionate that's why I love when you, what you do in your business talking about nourishing your mind and your body you know mm. it's 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 not about like eat this food it's about what's going on for you and how can we support that and how can you be kinder to yourself and how can you love yourself a little bit more and self-love really if you were to get to the root of self-love then we would be more mindful as to what we're putting into our body because this is the vessel that's carrying us and we want to be here for a, a, a long time and we want to enjoy it too so i find everything that you talk about the brain function managing stress removing certain obvious things or even adding things in because it might you know as you said control that spike i find that is just fantastic information so thank you for for sharing that with us today is there anything else that you wanted to maybe get across to the members of the wellness lounge or do you think that that's a good start yeah i think that's i think that's a good start i think it's a little things um and I, I really believe in acknowledging them. You know, I, with my clients, I always do food diaries. Yes. So we get to see, you know, how your day goes and how was your mood that day or how was your appetite that day or how was your energy that day? So we can see if there's a bit of a connection going on um, and you get to see your own progress in that. And I think sometimes you forget because we can so zone in on that one time we had that one thing yeah. that maybe we shouldn't have had. Yeah. We forget about all the little great changes we made, like having more water. You know, we really underestimate um, these the good stuff, yeah. and zone in on the the not so good. And I think it'd be I'd be getting more aware of the little changes I make and how good I feel because just it just has a ripple effect. Yeah. You know yeah. and. I don't think your med really think of your mind until you have to start taking care of your mind. Yeah. Um, and I think our bodies do a great job of taking care of us. Um, and it's, it's, you know, it's time then for us to take care of it. And this is a really good way of, of doing it. And I think with that as well is 
it's our own resource, you know, um, food is there for us. So then we have our own kind of support mm -hmm. for ourselves. And I think this at a time right now where we're all having to be a little bit self-sufficient, yeah. at least we know food, um, getting a good night's sleep and moving every day um, are really, really practical ways of, of nourishing us, you know. Yeah, and I, and I watched it a little bit last night of Joe Wicks, the body coach, was doing some kind of an interview with, um, oh, why is his name gone from me? That English presenter that's gone spiritual. I can't remember his Russell name. Brand. Yes, Russell Brand. Oh, my God. I could see his, his um, who I love. Like, I love the converse, the real conversations that he's having. And, you know, Joe Wicks was saying that um, now that he's got two kids, that he really has a concern for you know the world that they're going to grow up in and in this time it's really got him thinking about not taking food for granted anymore um and also where the food is coming from you know so um and i think as well people can actually develop a better relationship with food now there's a lot of people cooking at home and when mm -hmm. you're cooking at home you can be more mindful of what you're actually putting in and you mm -hmm. can actually enjoy the the process a little bit um and and really good then you know make better choices around the foods that you are eating i know one thing that i'm going to definitely keep doing is my big shops i was somebody that was kind of like every day not really thinking about what i was having but now we're planning our food and we're eating really nutritious balanced meals and i'm loving it like i'm absolutely loving it because the taste we had a bolognese last week that i have it, i'm telling you i should open up an italian restaurant it was gorgeous it's like oh my god the taste in that you know so um it's it, i do think people have an opportunity to look at food differently um really look at the ingredients don't forget about the fresh ingredients i've been to the supermarket there's lots of fresh ingredients there um take the time to think about what can actually support your brain function your mood go easy on the sugar go easy on the process so um i think um i think we all are going to be more educated and informed coming out of this time so thank you for sharing that with us noel before you go um there's three questions that i'm asking all our guests on the wellness lounge because we're all about wellness but we know that wellness means Means different things to different people um, so tell us when I ask you what does wellness mean to you what would you what would you think yeah I think it's when you have your health at a stage where you have energy you mm. feel vitality and yeah. um, you can enjoy your day and um, your work life balance is good yeah. You have downtime. Um, I think it changes as well. I think you. I think it adapts. I think wellness is forever changing and forever growing. Sure. Um, and it means so many different um, things to different people. And I think it even depends on where you are and your health. Do you know, is it your physical yeah. health that needs more attention to build your wellness? Is yeah. it your mental health? Um, is it your social health? Do you know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah financial health you know there's so many areas that impact our health yeah but I think we're always going to be building on wellness you know yeah there's so many different pillars yeah and you know just touching on that social um I'm sure a lot of people will not take their relationships their friendships their their colleagues going to work um for granted because a lot of people are missing that social connection so there can be a dip in your in your well-being there but i love what you said vitality i love that word vitality you know and and that energy as well and you know people get that from different areas as as you said so what has this time given you from the point of view for your wellness what have you been able to maybe do more of or what are you doing less of that directly is positively impacting your wellness um i think in one way it really reconfirmed the little things do you know, it really confirmed how much um, we have, um, how well our needs are met, I suppose, from mm -hmm. our homes, you know. Yeah. Um, now, I know not everyone is in that same boat to have a nourishing, safe home, you know, and I know it's lucky when you can say that, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's, it's that. I think it's being able to notice the real little things that we have, the basic things like good food. Yeah. Um, and we live in a in a country that has good food naturally, good root food, yeah. root vegetables, and everything good meat. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and I think it's that. I think it's just ma making sure that I'm I'm still doing those little things um, okay. all the time. Um, I suppose the less of that I'm really really missing is the social aspect. Okay. You know, yeah. really, I can't believe <laughs> I I must have never been at home. Um, <laughs> I'm really missing that okay um, that interaction with people it's just it's so good for your health it's so yes. good for your well-being yeah um but I think you just have to manage with what with what you have and yes. the people you're living with um online conversations mm. and the little like the little things I said with the with the food and with moving and all that um and we all we all have it's all accessible for for us you know it is there yeah it's, you just look at it that way I think you know that's it yeah yeah and training our minds to look at it that way which I suppose then the next thing that I'm asking people is about gratitude and that helps us look for for the good so what one thing would you say that you're grateful for right now that I feel safe um I, so I don't important think, I don't think underestimate that feeling you know when you feel safe um everything is kind of doable and manageable and you can face your day and you can sleep at night. Um, so I'm just, I'm grateful. So I'm grateful that I, I feel safe every day and I don't take that for granted because um, some people aren't right now. Sure. And I know as well, even if you are in a place in your mind that's not good, that, that makes you feel unsafe. Yeah. So and it's just telling myself, even if I don't feel safe, I'm like, I am safe. Just yeah. tell myself I'm okay and I'm safe and I think that's very reassuring to tell yourself that mm -hmm. um, and that's that's what I would be very grateful for and such a good point Elaine you know to to remember the things you're grateful for yeah absolutely there, even in your darkest hour um, and yeah. they are there they really yeah. are yeah, we're, we're doing a lot of that in the Wellness Lounge over the last week to 10 days. Um, and we know that some people are like, what? Gratitude? How can you even consider gratitude right now? Um, but, you know, in my darkest moments in my life, I've turned to gratitude and finding the simple things to be grateful for has actually helped me to get up in the morning, to actually do things and to, to function. So I would never underestimate the power of gratitude. And I love that. I am safe. There's a lovely, like Louise Hay. Um, I don't know if you know Louise Hay. Um, yeah. She, yeah, um, she just has that simple affirmation. I am safe and developing that support with yourself because people seem to forget that we're talking to ourselves with our thoughts all day long. We're talking to ourselves all day long. So we may as well put in a few nice comforting thoughts in there yeah. to support ourselves as well. So that's beautiful. You, you've just reminded me of that one. That's so comforting. So thank you. Yeah. Um, so that is it. Thank you so much, Noelle. You have given me, uh, excuse the pun, food for thought, but you actually have because I'm going to look at adding some of that kind of protein and look at my sugar content a little bit as well. I'm okay on the fresh produce, um, but you know, maybe, maybe too much coffee at the moment at home and maybe a little bit more water. So thanks for giving me a gentle nudge. Um, I'm going to put on the end um, how people can contact you if they would like to get more information. Um, thanks for your time. Keep Thank safe, um, keep well, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Brilliant. Thank you.